Hi, I'm Alicia Sterling, and I have no relation whatsoever to Bruce Sterling. And I want to talk about exactly why what he says about spines is complete and utter bunk. So, let's start off with his example. He talks about a shoe. This is my imaginary shoe. That shoe, when I no longer want it, I would right now throw it away. And it would go and sit in a garbage dump someplace, rotting or not rotting for thousands of years, or millions of years. And he says, I'd really like to have an RFID chip in there so that I can find out all of the pieces that are in this shoe so that instead of throwing it away and letting it rot or just take up space for the next few million years, instead we can take it and we can part out all of the pieces, possibly selling them on, recycle, reuse. This is great. This is a good thing for us to do. See, we should have RFIDs. And he says, yeah, sure, there's the potential for people to use that information badly, but there's always potential. We live in a democracy. We can protect ourselves. Okay, so here are a few problems with that. One, we live in a democracy. Okay, not everybody in the world lives in a democracy. And the big markets like the United States and like Europe, they have a lot of control over what happens in the rest of the world. Because if in the United States everybody's using RFIDs in their clothes, well, putting RFIDs in all the clothes makes perfect sense and it's going to happen everywhere. On the other hand, if in the United States and in Europe they say, no RFIDs in our clothes, period, the end, then there's less likely to be RFIDs in the clothes of people in, oh, I don't know, Kenya or Mumbai, India or any other place. So maybe China, it's a really big market. Maybe they'll stick RFIDs in their clothes. We can't control what happens everywhere. But people who do live in democracies should use their right to say something in order to control their own protection, their own privacy. Now, secondly, why do we really need to have RFIDs? There are reasons to use RFIDs, but using them in order to identify all of the pieces in stuff really doesn't make any sense and it doesn't hold up. Because I can identify everything that's in that stuff without using radio frequencies at all. We can write stuff really, 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 really small, microscopically small. And we can put that on a tiny little chip, which could be read with a handheld microscope. Sounds crazy, but you know what? It's not as crazy as you might think. And in fact, the cost of it is about the same. There's really no reason that we have to use radio frequencies. So what's the difference? If I've got an identifying number that's sitting in a chip, you can track me using that, whether you're using it with a microscope or whether you're using it with radio frequencies, right? Well, not so much. Because if somebody has to walk up to my shoes and put that device right up to my shoe in order to read it visually, well, they're not going to be doing that every time I walk into a store, are they? On the other hand, if they can just pick up the radio frequency as I walk under the doorway, walking into the store, well, pff, that's a no-brainer. Of course they're going to. And you know what? If I've got, oh, I don't know, Nike shoes or Adidas shoes or whatever, and they have a tag in them that says what kind of shoe they are and what they're made of and ooh, how old they are, and Nike has an agreement with, say, I don't know, the Emporium, or Neiman Marcus, or, hell, oh, Kmart. And as I walk in the door, it picks up the information and it says, ooh, her shoes are two years old. Oh my goodness, she totally needs new shoes. You don't want people walking around with two-year-old shoes. So immediately they start marketing new shoes to me. And they know what brand my shoes are, so that makes it really easy. Hmm, I wouldn't like that so much. Would you? Now, there's definitely reasons to have RFIDs, and I'm not going to get into all of the arguments about when it's right and when it's wrong, but let me give you one big thing to think about. The RFID that's in the card that you use to get into work 
at a lot of workplaces. You know, that card that you have that you just stick it up against the little panel and it opens the doors for you. Okay, so they can track you in the office using that RFID card, right? Right, but when I leave the office, I have the choice whether I'm gonna keep that in my pocket or in my wallet or whatever, or whether I'm gonna leave it at home. Or maybe I'm gonna leave it in my car in a little metal box that is thick enough that the radio frequencies aren't going through. Maybe. I have a choice. Now, if the RFIDs are in my clothes, I'm not exactly gonna strip off my clothes every time I walk into a grocery store because I don't want the RFIDs in my clothes getting picked up. I no longer have the choice. That's pretty important as far as I'm concerned. Another issue. How far does that information get? The information gets as far as the network allows it to. It doesn't matter whether the RFID reader has to be within two inches of me, which isn't the case. As you well know, RFID readers can in some cases be as far as 30 feet away, maybe even more. So that doesn't really matter though because wherever the RFID reader is that picks up the radio frequency and gets the information about who I am and what else my RFID tag says, that stores everything into a computer. The computer is probably networked. The computer is probably sharing information with other networked computers. Ah, so wait a second. RFIDs have a range that's global has nothing to do whatsoever with the radio frequency or the radio range. Information about where I am right this minute can be found based on my cell phone, if you can talk to my cell phone company into giving you that information. We have laws about that, though. You can't just talk the cell phone company into telling you where I live or where I'm standing or what I'm doing. No, you have to have a warrant for that. It's not the same with RFIDs. Companies that own those RFIDs have the information and they can choose who they share it with. We don't have laws about that yet. And until we do, sharing is open and free. And with all of the potential, <clears throat> excuse me, for marketing involved with sharing that information, do you think the lobbyists are gonna sit down and let us say, no, no, you can't share that information. Nah, it's too easy to explain why that sharing is just so great. And it's also too easy to lose our privacy and our personal choice about what we want to let people know and what we don't want to let people know. Now, I don't want RFIDs in my clothes and I don't want RFIDs in all of my stuff. It's just not acceptable and there are other routes. The real question here is, do we need RFIDs to give us the information about what's in stuff? No, we don't. All we need is some sort of a code that explains what's in the stuff, like an ISBN number, the ISBN number on a book. It tells you where that book was published, what country, what publisher. It tells you information about the subject of the book. You could do the same sort of thing in a longish code, alphanumeric, human readable to the eye. You could have all sorts of information about stuff, any stuff, whether it was a building, a piece of clothing, tables, whatever. It doesn't matter. We can create that code and we can write it. We can write it on huge tablets or we can write it microscopically on little chips. But you have to read visually without radio frequencies. Think about that.